Have you noticed how much more we hear about macular degeneration as a leading cause of blindness over 65? It used to be glaucoma. You know, could it be because of the more common use of blood pressure pills, as revealed in a recent study in the Journal of the American Academy of Ophthalmology? Well, it's true. In fact, they published it in the Journal of Ophthalmology in May of this year. And, and what they did is, is they looked at 5,000 people, Vicki, who had problems uh, or, or in a population. And then they tracked to see what percentage of them would get macular degeneration over 25 years. And the study ended somewhere around two thir- uh, 2013. And what they found was is 8% of that population developed macular degeneration. And of those people that were taking a certain kind of antihypertensive drug that's called a vasodilator, like hydralazine or minoxidil or minipress, they had about an 18% incidence of macular degeneration, at least of an early form. So how is vasodilation related to macular degeneration? I have no idea. I don't think they studied that. But what we do know is that when you have disruption of the surface of the center part of the retina, which is where the focal point of your vision is, so you're right in the center of where you're looking. So it so looks you, like a little black circle. It could be a hole in, the, in your vision that might be black and it might just be fuzzy. And then it just keeps getting bigger and bigger till you can't see the middle of somebody's face or whatever you're looking at. Well, it becomes at. very hard to read, and you can't drive, and it's, uh, it's a real problem. We don't have any, any great cures for it. I mean, you have to inject certain kinds of drugs into the eye uh, to do that. They're, they're like a, they're drugs called like Avastin, which is an anti-cancer drug, actually. So this is turning out to be something that is not expected, but, you know, we see that all the time. When we're, when we're looking at... Uh, any medicine that comes out, sometimes it takes us 50 years to figure it out. I mean, one drug called Darvon, which has been around since probably 1960, was taken off the market just a couple of years ago because we eventually found out that it causes problems with abnormal heart rhythm disturbances that can be lethal. So whenever we're doing something besides lifestyle to try and manage a condition, the odds go up in terms of what kinds of side effects that we'll see. And Why they call them side effects, I have no idea, because these are the clinical effects of the drug that we don't like, so we give it a special name that makes it it sound not so bad. Yeah, which is why it's good to always go back to a healthy lifestyle, because actually with with your blood pressure, you can change your blood pressure and lower it significantly with a healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. Especially exercise is really important in reducing stress and getting enough sleep. Oh, there's so many things, yeah. The way you breathe. Well, eating a healthy diet. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's the same old thing for everything because that's what happens. Let's talk about the the beta blockers. Beta blockers are another class of drugs that are used to treat hypertension. Drugs like Tenormin and Indoral and about 20 others like that uh, have a higher incidence of wet macular degeneration. Now, what does that mean? Wet means that the change on the surface of the retina, Vicki, is much bigger than the change you see with the dry form. And when you have a lot of blood vessels growing and exuding an exudate, a a substance on on the surface of the retina, it gets very irregular. And then vision gets wavy and irregular. And then eventually you get that dark spot in the middle. It's a far more aggressive disease than what you see with with dry form of macular And we all know that the retina is really important, oh. and this is how a lot of people get blind. There's also diabetic retinopathy. That's which different. Is, it's different, but I mean that's on your retina. Or mm-hmm. if you think you have a detached retina, it's a medical emergency. You need oh, to go right sure. away to get that for repaired sure. because you could go blind. Right. So this is a really serious thing, and it's really worth it to do your research and find out ways to lower your blood pressure without taking this risk of going blind. However, on the other hand, if you have high blood pressure, I suppose you could go blind from that, huh? uh, Not commonly. You could have a stroke. Far less. Well, a stroke for sure. The problem is heart attacks and strokes and peripheral vascular disease, renal failure. I mean, there is always a way to manage uh, a health condition using lifestyle as one aspect of care. And I'm not saying that that should be done all the time. But when we have the chance to do that, there aren't many side effects to eating a healthy diet or reducing stress or getting enough sleep or weighing what you should or being exposed to environmental toxins or finding joy in life. There are no downsides to those 
except that maybe you're a little uncomfortable doing that because you're not used to it. And if you go to drsaputo.com, we have a lot on hypertension and blood ah, pres- high, high blood pressure how to manage it. on our website. And so, you know, check it out and find some natural ways to reduce your blood pressure without taking the risk of taking these drugs that could possibly make you go blind. Well, lifestyle is the most powerful medicine in the universe. So if you want to be well, pay attention to the style in which you live your life. You got it.